and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. As this is our first time in this newly refurbished building, we're going to say some prayers now and blessing this new building for worship of many generations to God. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we are able to be together once again in this place. This building has been through a lot over the last few months, as we ourselves have been through a lot and faced all our challenges. But now we sit in the light of our new building in the light of our refurbished sanctuary and we pray that you bless everything that happens in this place that you bless all the words that we say all the things that we hear and may this building stand as a testament to your glory for many years to come out of the darkness there has come a great light Lord, shine your light in our hearts. Refill and refuel us and this place. Fill it with your spirit. So that all who may enter may leave knowing that you are with them, and love them, and bless them. For this we pray through the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Life. Amen. We're now going to have our first reading, Sister Rose is going to read for us from the Prophet Isaiah.
Thank you. 
that in the darkest of times we have felt your presence. There's been so many times over these last few months where we have felt low, where we have felt the darkness around us. And you said light. When thinking about this building, we thank you for all the builders that have put their time and their effort into so diligently putting this spark back into the church, to bringing it back to life. And we thank you for all who have worked in this building in one way. And Lord, we acknowledge too that we have been precedent and difficult time as a nation and the world. The coronavirus pandemic has cost hundreds of thousands of lives and has changed our way of life. But even in these times of darkness, you have sent lights. You have sent rainbows of hope in the form of all the doctors and the nurses and all that have worked so diligently as key workers to keep people safe, to try and bring healing, to look after the vulnerable, and to ensure that those who felt alone knew that they were surrounded by love. We thank you for the outpouring of support and offers of help that we've seen come out of this virus and this pandemic. We thank you for all those who have offered to lend a hand, to collect shopping, to do the garden, to do anything that helps us, even if it's just call out for a chat. Father God, we have really felt the loss of the connection that we have to other people. This isolation has been felt by so many has really brought home how important it is to be together. Lord, we continue to pray for the doctors and the nurses and all the key workers, all those who are working so hard create a treatment and a vaccine so that this monumental loss of life can be brought to an end. And we think of all those who have lost loved ones during this time. And we pray that your comforting arm is upon them. We remember those members of our church who we have lost during this time. Think of Sister Adeline Merchant and Sister Aurora Skelton. We pray for their families and their loved ones and friends and all those who have felt their loss and yet have not been able to grieve and mourn in the way that we have become so accustomed to. So much loss has been felt that we pray that you pour your comforting arms upon us and all who mourn and grieve. Lift us up and carry us toward the lightest highway that are sure to come. And help us to learn the lessons of this time, to never again take for granted a handshake, a hug. A warm embrace. Never again take for granted the chance to lift up our voices in song and sing the praise. Never again take for granted our help, for we know that it can go in an instant. Let us live each moment as a testament to you as beacons of light and hope and love as we seek to bring about a healing to this nation, 
church, and indeed the world. Gracious God, we thank you for the light that shines in the darkness. We thank you for the light of Jesus Christ, who showed us that through you all things are possible. <coughs> Even in Christ's death has lost its sting. And we are full of a sure and certain life with you in your hands. Gracious God, for this and all things we pray, through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thinking of those that we lost, and I mentioned Sister Allen and Sister Aurora, but we've all known people who have sadly lost their lives over this period of time, even if they're not connected directly to this church. So we're going to listen now to a hymn that I had recorded a couple of weeks ago uh, to sing tribute and to bring our prayers. And a moment of silence as we listen to the words of a blind with me, we remember those who have lost their lives and continue to battle in this time.
some people blaming this thing or, or that thing, or was it something you did, or could we have done something different, or was it a, a punishment for something? Was God telling us off like we're some sort of naughty schoolboy? I've been listening to like a, a new podcast by Lutheran Pastor Maggie Paul Weber, who is in my book, The Confessional. In it, she interviews various people who want to talk about things that they often irrationally feel guilty about. In one episode, she starts by talking about this notion of blaming ourselves when bad things happen. She tells the story of sitting by the deathbed of a woman in her seventies to take her final confession. She says, the thing that broke my heart wasn't the fact that she had had an affair with me in the marriage. It was that a few years later, when she and her husband had a stillborn child, that she blamed her earlier infidelity for it. For 45 years, she carried the moral burden of something she actually had no control over. Now you go on to talk about this human nature to assign blame to ourselves when the chaos and randomness of life is just too uncomfortable for us to handle. Because it's better to feel filled with life than to face the void. It's terrifying to think that horrible things can happen for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But sometimes life is unfairly random. And it can be unfairly random in both beautiful and terrible ways. She then goes on to interview a young man who, for years, carried the guilt that all no sense of rationale. He was driving his car along the highway when a young woman jumped out in front in a clear attempt to enter her own life. And indeed, they found several notes saying that this is what she was going to do. But yet, despite the fact that there was absolutely no fault on him, there was no blame, for years he carried a sense of guilt that he was responsible for something which he clearly wasn't. It's easier sometimes to blame ourselves or others, or even blame God, than to face the reality that sometimes bad things just happen. There's no rhyme, no reason. There's no one to blame. There is no karma. There's just life. And this notion of blame and karma and the effects of sin is what is at the heart of our gospel reading. We start by seeing a man who was born blind. And his disciples ask, Whose fault is it that he's blind? They say, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents when he was born blind? They had this understanding that if somebody had gone blind and he must have done something wrong, but he was born blind, so he hadn't done anything wrong. So was it his fault or was it his parents? To which Jesus answers, neither. Nobody was at fault. When we're presented with someone in need, we have to act and help. As the story goes on, the man has to prove to people that he was healed, and many people didn't believe in the lion in the first place, or they didn't believe that he could be healed. He brought before the Pharisees, who of course don't believe it. I mean, their main issue is that Jesus did it on a Sabbath day, so in their eyes he was a sinner. So how could a sinner do it? They called the parents and asked them about it. Listen, listen to how they frame their question. Is this the one you say was born blind? Is this the one you say was born blind? That's the blind man this question thoroughly. To go out of the synagogue, saying, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture? Steeped in sin at birth? No child or anybody born in this world is born in born in sin. And even for uh, all of us, we acknowledge that we are sinners to the very degree on a regular basis we sin and 
do not believe and have never believed that this fire has caused so much damage to the house of God. This place where people for years and years to come, and years and years in the past, has come from God. I do not believe that leaving your mobile phone on during the service should be acted as punishable by something terrible happening to you. And that brothers and sisters. 
sisters brings our time of worship to a close, except for you what you're going to share in the blessing. Um, just to remind you that before we do finish our view of the housekeeping, so again, we will be exiting by the vestry where the collection plate is uh, situated and then going out through the doors at the hall. And I'm going to move um, uh, to a little door, so I can like to see each and every one of you and speak to you before you go. Um, so that's, that's where my will be in the to try and catch you. Um, we will be back next Sunday uh, to take the service, same time, same place, different service. Uh, we're all the same for the retreat. So thank you for coming. I know there's been a lot of uh, concern and anxiety and worry about coming out. Uh, to the service, I know that many of our members are still felt not safe to come out. Sister, go on. Just remember in the evening when the hiding spot, she needs to Thank you very much, sister. Um, that's nice. Please, yeah, I'll be in time. 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 So, so, we. Okay. So when we uh, back next Sunday, um, as you go, when the school is back, when we have our community this Sunday, um, it's going to be the first Sunday of the month. There are other procedures that we have to put in place before we do this. We have to work out a way of doing it safely. But the Hampton Doctrine has been released this week and goes through ways that we can do that. So the whole group is next month, the first Sunday in October, we will be back. Uh, serving convenient and also in the next coming, next coming few weeks, our Sunday school is back up and running as well. But everything has to take uh, sort of steps in the, in the way. Patricia? So, um, we'd like to say congratulations to Peter, he's going to be a dad. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 